Bruna Battenhammer. The Dwarven King's heart is soft, but his axe is sharp. Hoidee ho, fellow viewer, here you see Warchief. For another review, this week we are going to talk about Dark Alliance. Right now what you see is the cinematic and it's not exactly what you can expect from the game. There is some similarity, yes the graphics are pretty much the same, which are nice. Scenery is good, the combat mechanic needs improvement, needs some love from the developers I would say. It's not um, completely helpless, we're able to do our stuff, there's endless amount of combo. We need to learn how to use it, so the first time you play the game it gets confusing a little bit. There is some stuff to improve. Like I said, the game needs, uh, definitely need love from the developers a little bit. Some more update will make it great. Uh, it's, uh, there's some interaction, some mechanic for the combat that are clunky a little bit. But still, it doesn't make it a bad game. The game is really enjoyable and it's mostly related to a teamwork. They care for each other. You want to team up with other people around in order to uh, exploit some better difficulty and also to access better loot. The scenery gets better also because when you play with team you have a combo that will be centered on a teamwork. If I do one thing in particular in my setup with my character I will activate a team combo for all my teammates around and it makes it really easy to play at harder difficulty when you have that. It's made by Wizard of the Coast, it's made by Tuke. Here we are, Dungeon and Dragons, Icewind Dale, Dark Alliance. I used to play that game, uh, not that one, but I used to play the franchise 20 years ago in Icewind Dale 1, Icewind Dale 2, back in Kuldahar. These games were really uh, candy for me when I was younger, lots of uh, uh, text to read. But right now we don't really have that, it's most likely placing ourselves into the context. We are in Icewind Dale. Most of the lore will be thrown at us through cinematic, which is good for most of the gamer base, but I would say that the old fans like me will see that it's different, maybe some will be disappointed. Personally, I'm able to enjoy it, it's different. I was not expecting to see exactly the same thing I was playing 20 years ago anyway. It's an improvement, it's a complete different game, to be honest. So right now you see that we're at the base, you see that these are difficulties. If you see that it's yellow, I strongly suggest you to take your time, maybe do some lower difficulty, grind some loot, level up your uh, level one, two, three gears, upgrade them in order to access uh, more difficulty because your rank of weapons will define your ability to face harder difficulty. One more cinematic there, we are meeting Icewind. The problem with the combat mechanic that you'll see a little later inside the gameplay is most likely that it's clunky like we said. I'm having combo when I'm have, I'm going forward, I'm having combo when I'm going backward, but I don't have anything related to strafing left or right. And that is a huge problem into a combat game like that. I need to be more volatile, more fluid. So that's why I'm telling that the game mechanic, the combat mechanic, needs some love from the developers. It's not helpless. Hopefully the game is not completely hard-coded, so they're gonna be able to make changes. I sure hope, because I'm not gonna lie, the game scenery is really awesome. I played it with my wife yesterday. We love the game. You need to put some time into understanding what you do inside the game before judging it because the first hours can be frustrating if you're trying to do harder difficulty with a low level you're gonna get shred up especially if you're alone i strongly suggest you to go slow 
learn the game a little bit before placing a judgment. I was seeing some review on Xbox, which is awful. You guys know I play on Xbox. Uh, people probably played the game for like 15 minutes, went on the store and did a review really bad saying that this game is shit, this game is that, this game is that, but the guy actually played 10 minutes and decided to uninstall it. Um, yeah, you don't give yourself the chance to learn the mechanic. It's really important to learn. Right now, as you can see, the small sword right now is producing eat where I can stay on the side and use it to warm myself up in order to walk in those high sea shreds. This is a loot game, I'm not gonna lie to you, completely loot game. Most of the crafting is related to upgrading your own gear. There is no microtransaction, that I love. You play the game, you get better. You don't play the game, you stay a noob. It's plain and simple. There is no sharing except the sharing of the abilities, sorry, abilities on the battlefield, which are really... I would say limited a little bit, but still nice. Once again, a little more love out of the developers will make this work. You see right now in the combat, I jump, I have one attack. You have the small attack with the right bumper, the heavy attack with the right trigger. And you can switch between those to make combos. You go backward, you go forward, it's adding up into the combos. You can mix it up, you can buy more combos that will be more efficient. And you need to learn how to use it, but because it's not just buying combos, it's not taking the place of something you already use. Sometimes it does, but most of the time it will add more combo to your stuff. I'm playing as Drizzt at the moment. Feels good to see Drizzt Dorden in Forgotten Realms game, Dungeon and Dragons most likely. It hasn't been tagged as Forgotten Realms so far but still the game has many stuff to explore uh, this is where this is a checkpoint essentially you choose the way you want you want more loot or you want to rest because you need more potion need health i took the loot right now because it's the first one it was an easy one i'll be able to save another one later so you push forward yeah there is plenty of stuff hidden all around the place that you need to handle the game a little bit to be able to uh, farm it, to find it. Like right now you don't go too close to these because they blow up, so you blow them from further, you got chests hidden there, and that is loot. The harder your mission is, the better your loot is. Right now it's common ring, it's, it's crap, I'm probably gonna sell it. Tablet. You see... All around you, the scenery always looks good. You see that the, the graphics behind has been completed nicely. In combat also, they are offering you sometimes other roads where you can change the strategy in combat. I like that. If you have more friends with you, you can send two friends on the left side. They will clear these three enemies and eventually come in reinforcement in the middle area to shoot every thing down especially category category is actually quite uh, dangerous if you use it well because you can stay far from the target and keep doing enemies i'm not gonna lie these um, goblins are really stupid uh, the range of detection is really low i sure hope they will make it better for the reason not just for the difficulty it's for the strategy you can drag them away from their uh, small area, small outpost, small base, and trap them somewhere else. But they are really stupid. In the meantime, I kind of like also the animation of the goblins. It's well done. They hit like goblin, they hack like goblin, they, they look stupid. Uh, the shield aspect is good also uh, against them. I like that you need to pierce the shield, they can regenerate it really fast. You can block as well, uh, but the interaction is clunky. It needs to be uh, defined a little more. More, uh, I would say when I press the button, it needs to hack. It's the same way when I aim. Sometimes I tend to aim with the left trigger and the interaction is clunky. It's it's lagging a little bit. Not I would not say lagging, but it's just I need to wiggle the button to be able to activate, which is annoying. 
but it just takes some love of the developers. It's not completely helpless. A long time ago, I was playing uh, Lord of the Ring, War in the North. I'm not lying, this game makes me think of this game a little bit. They're definitely not the same uh, campaign mechanic, but there is some stuff that I like about this game that looks pretty much the same as Lord of the Ring War in the North. Most recently, a year, a few years ago, we had Dragon Age Inquisition. Mechanically, it makes me think more like that game, the multiplayer, where you go do missions, you come back home, and you save your stuff, you manage your stuff, you craft, but everything is related to missions, not a free roaming open world. That disappoints me. I like open world, but it's not something that ruins my fun completely in the game. I'll be able to enjoy it no matter what. Dragon Age Inquisition was really limited concerning the multiplayer aspect, so this game brings it a little more. I, I would definitely say it's a halfway between Dragon Age Inquisition and Lord of the Ring War in the North or the Lord of the Ring series on Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. Definitely liked the Lord of the Ring uh, War in the North combat mechanic a little better, but I see some resemblance. It's not that far, and since there is no interaction possible in the combat combo on the left and on the right side, everything is backward or forward, you need to adjust the sensibility of your camera to turn really fast. It's really important in a game that you go change that really fast, it's slow, and it's reducing considerably your ability to turn fast Block, re-attack. It's like if you play the Assassin's Creed series, you know what I mean. It's like I, I'm defenseless against players from the left, the right, and even a little bit on the back. This little guy there, I'm alone, so I'm not gonna go fight him. But uh, most of the uh, levels, missions have a side boss that you're not forced to kill. These will just give you a huge bonus. Uh, considering an item, experience, gold, and stuff like that. But there is usually one of those that you're not necessarily forced to kill. Every time you move forward, I've noticed that it would not be that hard, honestly, to walk straight to the end of the mission and just farm the bosses. But the whole point of the mission is to be able to catch minerals, to be able to catch gold, to be able to boost yourself when you're back at home. So it, it in my opinion, it br brings us the possibility to play pretty much the way you want. If you just look to pass the game real fast, you can do it in a matter of hours, in my opinion. But if you want to farm the game drastically and explore every single mission and unlock everything, uh, it's going to take you a certain time. The replayability of the game is really good. Because it, 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 it literally asks you to pass the game at low level, come back and repass it with high level. At some point you're gonna have unlocked so many good weapons, legendary weapons, armor and items that you're gonna be able to play the game solo properly in the highest difficulty. Or help your friends that are starting in the game. One thing is sure is that the game needs a lot from the developers right now straight away the game is out it's been two days i've been playing a little bit and uh, developers needs to put their attention into the the interaction and into the combat everything needs to be a little smoother i'm i would love also a complete custom of my controller but uh, I know that this is ruining the balance of the game sometimes. The game is made one way, so there is a difficulty. Asking the game to go completely the other way will ruin the difficulty. So uh, I understand some aspect. I'm just asking for the interaction, the combat to be a little more smooth so that when we start the game or when we get that higher difficulty, 
we have uh, the possibility to do combos that are smoother on the battlefield, that you can actually strafe on the left and strafe on the right side, uh, and do combo in the meantime. Since it's restricted to forward and backward, every time I'm getting flanked, it's a problem. The locking on target is not far enough. I need to be able to lock on target from really far. Not just to use a bow as example if I'm using Caterbury, but most likely to be able to see my battlefield. Also, the moment I zoom, or target on it, it zooms straight away. And that ruins the, uh, the, 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 the vision of the battlefield I have. That's really annoying. So that needs to be readjusted a little bit. I would also suggest uh, uh, some kind of a automatic aiming that you don't see when you have a target in front of you. It's not normal that I'm starting to swing and go completely at the other end of the battlefield, missing every single target I was supposedly aiming at. So there is uh, many improvement to do. Honestly, I think we have a good platform for Forgotten Realms, Wizard of the Coast, to bring us back into some of the story we loved so much in the past 20 years. Icewind Dale 1, Icewind Dale 2, uh, Neverwinter Nights also, that is considerable. We have so many games that would definitely worth coming back there, so I'm expecting DLCs eventually. I'm expecting also, and I hope, having more character, because right now the big problem of the game is that every character is really specialized. You cannot really... Yes, you can change the perks, you can change the combos, you can readapt your stuff, but... Drizzt is using two swords. Volvgar is using an axe. The tank is the the, the, the dwarf. And the uh, archer is Caterbury. We need more. Uh, we need the paladin. We need a clerk. We need uh, every single option that we had back in the time, back in the days, for the lore of Forgotten Realms. This is missing drastically into the game. But I feel like the game was rushed to go out. It feels unfinished. I feel like I'm testing it more than playing it. And if developers are looking at this video today, guys, you, you made a good game. You made a really good game. It needs love a little more. And it needs love also from the player. But sadly, the hate train is always easier to jump on than the love one. Uh, you listen 10 seconds to the hate train and if you're a hater you're gonna jump on it it's uh, mostly the big problem that we have sometimes that we have good game and the market the player base that is really negative will destroy every single aspect to have more content hopefully that's not gonna happen with that one dark alliance dungeon and dragon Icewind Dale is a good game has a good potential needs love Needs DLC, needs more character, needs interaction smooth in the game, as the same as the combat. And in six months, we have a really, really good game. This is QC War Chief with Chief's Review. It's been a pleasure. Please like, please subscribe, please come back for some more. And may your buttons be with you. You'll need that in that game. <laughs> The goblin siege engines continue to be a threat. They must be destroyed. your end.
This one will take some effort. <laughs> Stands against me. Champion! Ah! <laughs> 
to fail.
I do it all for the Dale, and my friends. 